Between 1992 and 2011, Manchester United won every competition that they participated in, at least once. In many cases, they won these competitions several times over. To maintain that kind of dominance over such a long, sustained period of time, a team needs a strong, reliable core group of personalities. In the case of United, there are three personalities who were present throughout this entire period of time and who were probably most credited for the success. Those three personalities are Sir Alex Ferguson, Ryan Giggs and Paul Scholes. However, there is a fourth that is often not talked about in the same light as those listed before. That man is Gary Neville. Although nowadays he's more commonly seen being bullied by Jamie Carragher on live television. No one wants to grow up and be a Gary Neville. <laughs> Gary Neville was one of the most consistent and reliable defenders around during the first few decades of the Premier League. But it's been some time since he last took to the pitch, and some may be more familiar with his punditry than his footballing ability. So with that being said, how good was Gary Neville? What's up everyone, hope you're all doing well. In this video, we're going to be taking a brief look at the incredible career of Gary Neville. Born in 1975 in Bury, a town on the outskirts of Manchester, Neville was the eldest of three children in his family. His younger siblings, Phil Neville and Tracy Neville, were twins. As early as three and five years of age, Gary and Phil could be seen kicking the ball about in their backyard and competing against one another in one-on-one -on -one drills. In doing so, they developed an intense sibling rivalry and were constantly trying to best one another. Both have stated in the past that early in their development, it was the competitive nature of their relationship that most motivated them to continue and improve. In their youth, both Phil and Gary Neville played for local clubs Boundary Park Juniors and Bury Juniors before eventually joining Manchester United. Gary Neville joined Manchester United on an apprenticeship in 1991. His dedication and overall ability were noticed immediately upon joining the club, so much so that he was given the captain's armband in his first season with the youth team. Even further to that, he went on to captain the Manchester United youth team to an FA Cup final win in 1992. Although at surface level, this was only a youth competition, this FA Youth Cup victory was more significant than you may think. The reason for this is that the members of the Manchester United squad that played in this final would later go on to form the core of the senior team during the club's most successful period. The players that featured in this FA Cup final, other than Gary Neville himself, were none other than David Beckham, Ryan Giggs and Nicky Butt. These players, along with Paul Scholes and Phil Neville, would eventually come to be known as the class of 92. Now, when most people People hear names such as David Beckham and Ryan Giggs, it's unlikely that they will think of Gary Neville in the same light, from a technical perspective that is. And to an extent, they may be right. In his third autobiography, Sir Alex Ferguson once said, Gary Neville pushed himself harder because he knew that he did not possess the natural talent of some of his teammates. Because of this, his discipline and desire to constantly improve was nothing short of relentless. When speaking on Neville's discipline, Ferguson even went on to say, I never used to worry about what he was up to on a Friday night because certainly in his younger days he would always be in bed by 9.30pm. Neville made his first appearance for the United senior team in 1993 in a match against Torpedo Moscow in the UEFA Cup. Fast forward to 1994. At the age of 19, Neville established himself in the United starting lineup. This occurred after Paul Parker, the then first choice right back, picked up what later turned out to be a career ending injury. In 1996, Neville won his first of several Premier League titles with Man United after a pretty crazy season. In this season, Man United overhauled a Newcastle side that led the Premier League by 10 points at one stage of the season. Now, the story of this season is so crazy that it probably deserves a video on its own, really. Over the next three years, Neville continued to improve and further solidified himself as one of the best defenders in the world. Again, he was never the fastest, most technical, tallest or most athletically gifted player around. However, his aggression, work rate, positional awareness and overall game intelligence made him stand out amongst the best of the best. In the same period, Neville formed an incredibly strong right-sided partnership with David Beckham. With Beckham in the right midfield position and Neville at right back, no team was safe from dangerous in-swinging crosses into the box. The pair had an incredible understanding of each other's movement and positional sense and would often cover for each other in both defense and offense. When describing his relationship with Beckham, Neville once said, 
It was a 50-50 partnership in which I defended and attacked for him, and he defended and attacked for me. This brings us to the 1998-99 season, a season where United climbed to the summit of world football by winning a famous treble, the Premier League, the Champions League, and the FA Cup. And you guessed it, Neville played a starring role in all three triumphs. He played in 34 of the 38 Premier League games of that season, in every FA Cup match, and in every Champions League match. Many consider this to be the greatest season of Neville's career. In the years that followed the treble win, Neville and United won several more Premier League titles, most notably in the 2002-2003 season. This is due to the fact that Arsenal had an eight-point lead quite late into the season before United overturned that lead and ended up winning the league by five points. You've probably noticed by now that United have a habit of making comebacks. Fast forward to 2005, Roy Keane, who was the Manchester United captain at the time, had just had a rather public falling out with Sir Alex Ferguson and ended up leaving the club and joining Celtic. In the aftermath, Gary Neville was given the Man United captaincy in November of 2005. He lifted his first piece of silverware as the United captain in the very same season after winning the Carling Cup, more commonly known as the Carabao Cup nowadays. However, he had to wait until 2007 to lift the Premier League trophy as the club captain for the first time. Unfortunately, in the same year, Neville suffered a broken ankle and began experiencing frequent groin-related problems shortly after this. Neville was 32 at the time when these problems became more and more frequent, and unfortunately, this marked the beginning of the end of his career. He missed the vast majority of the 2007-2008 season where United won the Premier League as well as the Champions League. Although he recovered and was available for selection, he was not picked in the Champions League final lineup and was unable to lift the cover to trophy as the captain. In the years that followed, he did return to the United starting lineup but began appearing less and less frequently. He eventually stepped down as Man United captain in September 2010 to allow for someone that played more frequently to lead the squad on the pitch. This was usually either Rio Ferdinand or Nemanja Vidic. Although he still remained as the captain of the club off the pitch and in the dressing room. Between 2007 and 2011, he only made 36 league appearances before eventually retiring on the 2nd of February 2011 at 36 years of age. Out of interest, Gary Neville's retirement is quite well documented. The timing of his retirement was rather unconventional as he retired halfway through the 2010-2011 season. By his own account, Neville was ready to retire at the end of the 2009-2010 season. However, Sir Alex Ferguson convinced him to stay on for one more year. This proved to be a step too far for him. According to Neville, from the very beginning of the season, he felt as though he could not go on for much longer. He was simply unable to maintain pace with the newer, younger generation of players. This notion is backed up by Steven Gerrard in his autobiography titled My Story. In his book, he states, Gary was an unbelievable defender and a force of nature running up and down the wing, but I think he went on for six months too long. In his illustrious career, Gary Neville won a vast amount of accolades and awards. Amongst those, he won eight Premier League titles, three FA Cups, and two Champions Leagues. Absolutely insane numbers. Following his playing career, Neville tried his hand at coaching. He first started off as an assistant coach for the England national team and held that position from 2012 to 2016. In a rather unexpected turn of events, in late 2015, Neville found himself coaching in La Liga as he took charge of Valencia as the head coach. As you can imagine, this appointment even to this day is met with mass confusion and it's safe to say that this may have not been the best decision on his part. Under Neville's management, Valencia were eliminated from the Champions League at the group stages, suffered a 7-0 defeat to Barcelona in the Copa del Rey, and only managed to win three of the 16 league matches that he was in charge for. This understandably led to him being sacked on the 30th of March 2016. All in all, he spent a total of three months as the Valencia manager. In similar fashion to Roy Keane, taking the leap to coaching was probably not the best decision on Neville's part. In addition to that, also similar to Roy Keane, punditry seems like a much better fit. Seeing Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher's back and forth on Monday Night Football will never fail to be entertaining. I think Pogba can play in one of the front three positions up from... I mean... <laughs> in closing, Gary Neville may not have been the most technically or physically gifted of his teammates, but he more than made up for that with his tenacity, aggression and formidable mentality. He is remembered as nothing more than a Manchester United legend and a certified footballing icon. And there we have it. 
I'd be interested to hear how you guys feel about not only Gary Neville's playing career, but also his punditry career. And even further to that, how much do you think a prime Gary Neville would go for in today's transfer market? If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.